Hey guys, it's Gaz. Welcome to the Warframe video. So in the most recent hotfix on PC, we received quite a few new items. We got the Atlas Deluxe skin, and we got these four new Augment mods I'll be going over in this video. And these Augment mods are for some of my favorite frames, so I was pretty excited to see they were getting added. So we have one for Garuda, we have one for Revenant, we have one for Nidus, and one for Korra. I'll be going over all four of them in this video today, and we'll be going over those in order of usefulness in my opinion. Okay, so let's get started. The first one aka the one I think is the least useful, is the Augment mod for Garuda's first ability, Dreadmere. So what this one is, it's called Dread Ward. So when you use Dreadmere to kill an enemy, uh, basically with the Execute, if you didn't know, Dreadmere has an Execute built into it. If an enemy is 40% health or lower, and you use the Diving mode on it, where it jumps at them and gives you the, the shield, um, if you execute an enemy with that, you become unkillable for 5 seconds, and that 5 seconds is moddable by duration, so if you have a super high duration build and you execute an enemy, uh, you'll have like 15 seconds of unkillableness. Uh, it's not invincibility, so the enemies can actually damage you uh, while this is going, but you cannot die. So you can be at like 1 HP, 1 energy uh, for that period of time, and you will not die. So here's some quick pointers on it. So yeah, as I said, uh, you have to be doing the execute on an enemy with 40% health or lower for the unkillableness. Uh, it is affected by duration. Um, and then, in my opinion, guys, situations like this don't happen often enough where you're going to get any use out of this mod. The execute on this ability is really fun and nice, but, um, yeah, depending on the execute to, like, save your butt is not really going to be something that's going to happen. Um, I think another mod in the slot you'd be using this in is just going to be better for survivability all around. So, for example, um, in this slot before, I had Umbral Fiber, so you see I get like 400 more armor, I get 200 more health, I get some more power strength, and the enemies are not going to be able to kill me when I'm running this kind of build. It's a mega overkill tank build, but they are not going to be able to kill me in this, unless it's like mega high level or I'm not paying attention, or playing the game for that matter. Uh, with Garuda, a lot of it is making sure you have an active playstyle, so making sure you have your blood altars up, making sure you're restoring your energy with your three. Um, that's a really big part of playing her. So see, I put my healing aura up. They really can't do anything to me right now. Let's actually get rid of the shields so they can shoot me normally. See, like, I have... So my energy bar is also my health bar right now. So let's actually use the mod, though. So we're going to get a guy to 40% health, and we're going to execute him. And you're going to see... I don't want to kill him too quickly. There we go. Alright, so see there? I have a little bit of duration on here. The... Uh, unkillable thing was about 8 seconds with my build. I think it's like 145% power strength. Or not strength, duration. So yeah, um, that's what it does. We would not be able to die. We'd be able to go on to zero or 1 health, but we would not die there. And um, yeah, you can just keep doing that if you find an enemy that's low enough health to execute. It's about 7 seconds of this build, actually. So yeah, I don't really think this is something I'm going to be using at all. But I am happy that Garuda's getting augment mods. I hope the augment mods for her 3 and her 2, and she eventually gets those, are more useful to the, the general playstyle I'm going for with, uh, with Garuda. Which is being really tanky and debuffing enemies with slash procs, and I'm not really like using the 1 as an execute most of the time. Like, I can just use it there because I see that guy's low health, but it's really not a focus of the playstyle, and this mod's not making it a focus of the playstyle for me. Because the thing about Garuda, guys, is like I'm just like face tanking level 100 right now. Um, I'm going to have to be in a really bad situation to be depending on an unkillable state for 5 seconds. So, I don't think those situations are going to come up often enough. And, I mean, this ability already does the execute without this mod, so I think the mod is just a waste of space, personally. Alright, so that is a quick overview of Dread Ward. I'm going to say, uh, maybe pick it up if you like playing Garuda, but definitely don't be expecting anything that's going to be uh, playstyle changing at all. Alright, so now that we've gone over that one, Let's go over the second uh, least useful one, in my opinion, and that is the Augment mod for Revenant. So, quickly switch to Revenant. And, I mean, this is actually a pretty powerful effect that it gives you, but the thing is, the way that this ability works for Revenant, the Reeve ability, which is his third, where he turns into a smoke cloud and dashes forward, uh, so what this does is it blinds people for up to nine seconds when you have a maxed out version of this. I don't really find this useful at all, because... The way Revenant works, guys, is if you have a mind-controlled enemy and you dash through them, it does, like, half of their health bar if you have enough power strength. So, let's quickly show, for example, here. 58% uh, health drain when we dash through a 
uh, mind-controlled enemy. If it's not a mind-controlled enemy, it's a lot less health drain. But um, still, like if we, if we didn't have this mod up here, we could throw maybe some more power strength up there or something like that to make our health drain even higher. So blinding enemies by dashing through them is really like kind of productive, in my opinion. Let's quickly go over the, uh, the overview I made for this. So it just does exactly what it says in the description. Um, this does scale with duration, so that's fun. Um, but the main problem with this guy is like it blinds the enemies, but it doesn't set them up for finishers. So you can't do melee finishers on them after you dash through them. Um, and then, as I said, mind, reaving through mind control enemies is a lot better. It just kills them. So if you, like, say I'm fighting a level 165 heavy gunner. If I mind control that enemy and then dash through them twice, which I can do in the same dash, by the way, she's dead. I don't need to blind her at all. Um, that doesn't come up in every situation, but that's how Revenant works. You mind control an enemy, you dash through them twice, you have enough power strength, and they are dead, dude. It even works on Koopa Guardians. But yeah, I, I can see some, some use for this. If you're just, like, running through a normal mission, you don't want to deal with enemies, you can just, like, dash through a hallway, and it goes through those enemies, and they're all blinded, they're not going to be shooting you, so you can just, like, run past them in peace without getting shot at. Um, so let's just quickly show how this works. It's not, like, anything crazy, it literally just does what it says on the uh, description, and it doesn't set enemies up for finishers, which kind of is uh, a bummer. We'll put invincibility on just because I don't feel like dealing with these guys right now. Alright, I'm also going to show how the mind control thing works, too. Alright, so I'm just going to dash through these guys. They are blinded. Can't do melee finishers on them. And now we're going to mind control this guy. And he's going to spread the mind control to his buddies, hopefully. Yep, so we got some mind control dudes. Now here's what you normally would do with Revenants. These guys are mind controlled. I'm going to dash through them twice. And they are all dead. Yeah, so that's more useful than, than uh, blinding them, in my opinion. We're at the ledge. So yeah, I, I can't really personally recommend this one, guys. But like, as I said, here's a situation I'm talking about that could be useful. In. I'm just like running through a mission. I'm trying to get to the extraction. There's a big group of enemies like blocking like this doorway that we're, this imaginary doorway we're thinking of right now. I would just use my three and dash through them. It would blind those enemies so they would not shoot me or my teammates as we're running through that doorway. That's like literally the only situation I can find this useful in. But um, yeah. Just don't use that one, in my personal opinion. I'm happy I have it, just for the possibilities of using it in the future. But yeah, definitely not a staple for any build for Revenant, in my opinion. Okay, and now let's go on to the next one. So, Augment number three is for Nidus. So this one is actually pretty interesting. Um, so what this one does, it's called Teeming Ber Berlachince. Ber Ber Berulence? Ber Ber Berulence, I think. Um, yeah, that word. So what this does is... You hit four enemies with your first ability, so like the stomp where it shoots the infested wave out. If you hit four enemies with it, it will give you 120% primary weapon critical chance for 15 seconds. This is moddable by duration and strength, guys, so this is pretty good. Um, but gotta keep in mind, it's not additive. It's not, it's not just a flat 120 that you're getting added onto there. It is multiplicative, and it appears to be multiplicative with the weapon's base stats. So you can't just have, like, a status weapon with 0% crit and have it become, like, a crit gun after using this mod. It's going to take the unmodded values of, say, your Gracada or whatever and then just bump that up. So the cool thing, though, is it is modeled by power strength. So if you have a decent amount of power strength, you can get, like, pretty good crit numbers. Um, and when I'm saying it's, good, it's the base stats of the weapon, that is not 100% confirmed, so... Don't take that as complete truth. Um, that's just what it seems like to me, because if it was going off the modded values of these guns, I would be getting constant red crits with my Gracada, and I was getting mostly orange crits. So that leads me to believe it's not taking the modded value, because my Gracada has over 100% crit chance by bait, or with the mods on it. Okay. Um, so me personally, I would not consider this worth a slot, but it can be fun for some nice memes. If you just want to see, like, tons of orange crits, guys, it's, it's definitely worth using for just orange crit memes. Um... You might have a hard time getting red crits unless you got, like, a really crazy setup. Um, but yeah. And then my suggestion is you would use his second ability, the Larva, to pull all the enemies together. And that will make hitting four enemies with your one stomp a lot easier. Okay, so let's quickly go over this. So we have 226% power strength uh, with this build. So that's going to give us, like, 280% increased uh, crit chance. And we're using the Prisma Gakata. I have a critical chance uh, Riven mod. We're also using Point Strike. So we have 116% crit chance modded, 
and you would think if they added, uh, increased it by like 200% uh, with this, this mod, it would actually make it red crits. But when I did the test earlier, it was mostly orange crits. So I'm just, it's leading me to believe it's not really working the way I want it to. All right, so we stomp. See, power strength modded value up there, 271% increased critical chance, guys. So see, they're all orange crits pretty much. There were some red crits in there. That might be from uh, Vigilante Armaments, though. All right, stomp again, 271%. Just almost everything is orange. There's some yellow in there. You can stop to refresh it. The cat buff we have right now is the um, affinity buff, so that would not be giving us any red or orange crits that we wouldn't have normally. But I definitely should unequip the cat. So you only hit two guys there or didn't refresh the duration. So yeah, um, it's fun. I don't know if I'd call it like a staple for any Nidus build. I had to take some like some range off of the build to fit that on there. Um, and let's just quickly show it with like the Phantasma, which has like no crit chance. Just so you can see that it doesn't um, it doesn't add like a ton of crit chance or anything with these kind of weapons. See? Three percent crit chance. Um, yeah, it's just it's not gonna crit. We might see one crit in this entire um, entire like firing session right here. So let's get all these guys together. We stomp them. And we got some crits in there. Still, if it was like, if it was an additive bonus, we'd be seeing almost all red crits at this point. So, yeah, uh, don't use it with uh, status weapons that are like this heavily status based. See, this is like actual numbers right here. Basically, all white numbers, no yellow. All right, so that was the uh, nicest one. Now we get onto the good stuff, guys. This is the good one we're going to right now. The Korra augment mod. Oh man, this is probably meta now. This is, like, honestly, probably meta. I used this in Akuba Survival last night, and oh man, it was so good. Okay, so this is a mod called Pilfering Strangle Dome for Korra. So Strangle Dome is her fourth ability where she so throws up, like, the big web thing, and enemies will get sucked into that and start taking damage per second. Also, if you use your whip on enemies affected by your four, the Strangle Dome, it will spread the whip damage to all the enemies affected by the Strangle Dome. So, yeah, this is, like, amazing. This is amazing, guys. This is probably going to be meta-defining uh, as far as Kuva survival is concerned. Also, a lot of farming areas besides this. So, yeah, 65% chance enemies will drop additional loot while they die in the Strangle Dome. So, it doesn't need to be a kill from the Strangle Dome itself. You can literally whip the enemy stuck inside there, and it will give you the increased drop chance for loot. This also stacks with Necros. So, we had a Necros in the squad last night. We are getting so much loot, guys. It was crazy. Um, I I think this stacks with Hydroid too. I have not tested if it stacks with Hydroid, but it does definitely stack with Necros. Uh, so yeah. Um, as I said, if you have a high range build for the Strangle Dome, it will grab enemies from the other side of wall walls, and they'll get stuck to the wall, and you can just whip that area that they're stuck in. And oh my god, it's so good! Definitely make sure you get this one. Uh, I have a video on Korra that shows my normal Korra build. So what I did for this build, when I changed it up a little bit, is I actually took off Augur Reach in this slot, so we lost 30% range. But man, the, th the stuff that we get in replacement of that 30% range is amazing, guys. For, for solo Kuva survival runs, I think Korra might be better than Necros now, honestly, because she's so much safer. You can put up this Strangle Dome around the Kuva Tower. Enemies just walk into it and get stuck. You can whip them, they're all gonna die. Um, it's it's amazing, guys. Like honestly, this is definitely the best one today. Um, I'm probably gonna keep it my Cora, like my Kuva build. See, I have a Kuva build right here. This was meant for uh, doing Kuva survival solo, but man, this is just so good, guys. Let's quickly bring this back up. Um, yeah, so I think Cora is now the queen of Kuva survival. Um, yeah, because like the main problem she had before is well, it wasn't a huge problem because you could actually kill stuff fast enough. Um, her problem was that she didn't have anything to buff loot drops. So she would kill a ton of enemies, but if they didn't drop life support, she was in trouble. But this, like, literally is exactly what she needed for her Kuva survival build uh, to make it more dependable, to go, like, an hour solo on Korra, no problem. Um, so as you see, guys, we have a really high range build here and a little bit of power strength. That power strength affects the multiplier on your whip, your first ability. It also affects how much damage per second your fourth ability and your third ability is doing. Um, so yeah, power strength is important on Korra, but um, 
Range is more important in my opinion, especially for the Strangle Dome build. Okay, so let's just quickly show what this does. We can't get additional loot while we are in the Solmac Room, but we'll just show what that's doing. Okay, so um, I definitely recommend you get this mod 100%, guys. If you learn anything from this video, it's make sure you get this mod if you have Korra. So you see they're all stuck in my 4 now. So I'm going to whip this guy and see these guys got damaged as well. They even got the viral proc from my viral whip. Now he's dead. I can even kill him with my Dread if I want to. And that will still count because he's in the Strangle Dome. Alright, so yeah, that's how it works. Your teammates can even kill these guys too. It works just fine. To recast our Strangle Dome. Also, there's a new thing they added like a week ago where um, you can actually do an airborne cast of your Strangle Dome and it does like an air slam. See, that was pretty cool. I really like that change. But yeah, you can also have two of these up at the same time, guys. So you can actually cover a huge area with the Strangle Dome. Um, and yeah, it's just amazing. Like, this is literally the Kuba Survival meta now. Embrace it, and it's... Honestly, Korra is so much fun to play in Kuba Survival. Because you just see huge groups of enemies stuck in your Strangle Dome. You just whip that area, and all those enemies are dead if you have a good build. Um, I'm also going to recommend you use a Stat Stick for Korra. You build your Stat Stick for raw damage and crit. But you can go down the status route. I have tried it. I definitely don't find the status route on stat sticks anywhere near as effective as the crit version. So I'm just going to quickly show my uh, stat stick for Korra. Uh, it's the Jaw Sword. The reason we use the Jaw Sword is because of this Blade of Truth Augment mod, which gives us an additional 100% melee damage. Some people do like the Mire instead. The Mire has a lower Riven Disposition, but it also has an Augment mod that gives you a plus 100% uh, toxin, and it also has a hidden passive of 10% additional toxin damage. And when you're getting a Riven for this, if you're getting a Riven for this, uh, stats like this are really good. Minus range does not matter for Korra. Uh, what matters is critical chance, critical damage. If I could get raw damage instead of toxin on here, it would be better, but I'm okay with this roll. Um, and then I used to have a status version for Korra, but it didn't work out the way I wanted it to, so yeah, that's pretty much not happening anymore. And that's pretty much it, guys. I hope that you found this video helpful. I would say that definitely get the Korra one, and the other ones are worth trying out, but definitely not worth putting on a build. For example, I'm never, I'm probably not going to take this off, um, unless like I really don't need the loot for some reason, which doesn't really come up very often. But yeah, definitely get this one, guys, and you guys have a nice night, morning, whatever. Please like, share, subscribe. I'll be doing the Nightwave Weapon Augment Mods tomorrow. I just want to make sure I got this video out, because these mods are awesome, and you guys need to experience this Korra thing before it gets nerfed, if it gets nerfed. I hope it doesn't get nerfed. Because honestly, it's amazing, guys. I'll talk to you next time. Peace.